out there. I look at Mr. and Mrs. Barry. I look at Barb. I look at Susan, and I think, oh my gosh, we all in some way connect with the district. And I think that's what's made us successful. We could not be doing this alone. The issues are too big. We don't have enough folks to do it on our own. So we really depend on all of our community partners. And that was also the vision of our Board of Education, to be collaborative, to get everyone working together. And I certainly think we could, can improve, but I think we are very slowly getting better. We have reached out to our community partners, and the, the surprising thing was so many of you were so willing to help all the time in all kinds of ways. Now, most of you already probably know a lot about the district, but just in case you don't, here's kind of a snapshot. Our district um, is getting more, and it's getting more diverse. Uh, that 73% economically disadvantaged has ticked up from 69% just two years ago. So the recession really has hurt our families, and we're getting a larger percent of youngsters with disabilities. And um, it's really because the public schools serve children who are handicapped. A lot of your private parochial charter schools don't have the capacity because it's expensive with the physical therapist, occupational therapist. So those numbers are rising too. And we're also picking up more Latino children. We have 54 schools and we've got all kinds of combinations of high schools, elementary schools, K-12 schools. Because when you cover 90 square miles and have 33,000 students, sometimes you have to look at the size of your building, the geography of the city, and also what the community is requesting. Our district is a district of choice. There's magnet schools at the elementary level. And then at the high school, you get a, a metro pass, and you can choose what high school to go to. We don't have theater patterns. Now, we have, uh, let's talk more about our community collaborations. Probably the most important one is the approval back in 2003. It was the bond issue that taxpayers approved so that we could build new schools. You know, our oldest school had been McKinley from, gosh, it was 18, I think 87 at the time. So as we built these schools, we tried to give back to the community and make them 21st century learning environments for our youngsters, but also community centers for the community who were so generous. And we're almost at the end of our facilities master plan. These are the schools that opened this year, the Mount Washington, Oregon, Western Hill, South Wing, Westwood, Woodford. We, um, Silverton has moved in um, this spring. We also, Sailor Park, Parker Woods, and we're opening Rothenburg this summer and also a rebuilt Aiken. So really, all we're going to have left is continuing work on Walnut Hills on one wing. Now when we, um, oh, Mount Washington, I did this especially for Mr. and Mrs. Barry, <laughs> who are on the LSDMC and instrumental in the new building. That truly is an incredible building that looks like a castle. So we did try to keep these beautiful old buildings and renovate them where possible. And it really was the newer buildings that we tore down, the ones just thrown up in the 50s or the 60s that weren't they weren't nice construction. They were those, um, you know, like ranch kind of buildings with plexiglass windows and low ceilings that you really couldn't do anything with. Here in Woodford, that's a beautiful building. Interesting stone and brick on the front. That's in Kennedy Heights. Western Hills High School, of course, was a renovation. That's the principal, Dr. Morton, down there actually talking to the press on the first day of school. And that, we're um, renovating that a week at a time. The South Wing just got finished and we flopped the youngsters into the South Wing and then we work on the North Wing. Because you really can't relocate some of those large high schools, so you have to do construction with the youngsters um, on site. Oh, and there's one of our uh, lunchroom staff, and I was surprised on the first day of school, one of the, um, uh, well, it was entree, it was a side dish, it was actually cucumbers. 
So our meals are much healthier, and it's, you know, we're trying to expose youngsters to different fruits, different vegetables, and it's going very well. Westwood School. You know, this is, I'll be honest, you know, this is one that gave us a headache because there had been that huge controversy. We needed to build a gym that was regulation size. And there was a bit of a dust up with the community about which side of the building to put the gym on. And we wanted to put it on the side facing the street because otherwise it would be right up against people's houses. But, you know, it, it was a divided community. And um, I have to tell you, when I, during construction, when I drove by and I saw this cinder block monstrosity with pink insulation on it, I went, oh, no. But now that it's finished, everyone says it's fabulous because it looks like the school. The brick is matched and everything's fine. But it was a rough couple of months there as we had to figure out how we were going to do that. And the uh, uh, Westwood Historic uh, group, there's the bell, the clock, they have restored it. It's in this beautiful glass case in the new building. And those are Berkwood fountains and murals that obviously we preserved. And Euler, another fabulous school that we have renovated. So we just have just some magnificent buildings in the district. Now, as I said before, in addition to the brick and mortar, we wanted to give back to the community who was so generous to us and offering our schools for community uh, meetings and, and events. And also inviting the community to come in and tutor and work with our youngsters. Because, again, I say, unless we have these public-private partnerships and work with our community, we truly, truly cannot do this alone. Strive's an example. The GE Foundation has been incredibly generous in helping us get a leg up on the new Common Core standards that are coming. And we have gotten uh, some national press about our community learning centers. Because many of you I know have heard about uh, the Harlem Children's Zone with Jeffrey Canada. And doing the same kind of things we're doing, after school programming, preschool for youngsters, tracking them preschool through um, graduation. However, they're funded by a millionaire, a very wealthy, a billionaire actually, a very wealthy person. Well, the problem is, how do you replicate that throughout the country? Because you have to find a billionaire who's going to fund it. So we figured out that probably wouldn't happen here. So we have done a lot of public-private uh, partnerships to help us provide the same kind of services. But, for instance, um, health centers. With the new health care um, law, there has to be something in there that talks about outreach with the hospitals. Because Mercy Hospital, Deaconess Hospital, they all come to us and said, we would like to stand your schools with a nurse practitioner or a pediatrician to provide health care. At first to our youngsters, many of whom don't have a primary care physician, but now their ultimate plan is to expand it to the families. They're also talking about doing health care for staff because it does cut down what helps the school district and the children are absent due to illness. It also helps the hospitals because I believe there's an overuse of emergency rooms and I believe it's part of the new health care requirement that hospitals do outreach. So we've been approached by all the local hospitals. They're pairing up, usually with a school that's close to them, that they can send their physicians over a couple of times a week and have a nurse practitioner in our, in our area on staff. And that truly has helped um, keep our youngsters in school.